Hey friends, welcome back to our Dream Big Nation podcast. I am so excited uh, for our next guest. She is a new friend and business mentor, Miss Michelle Faust. Michelle, welcome to our show. Thank you so much. It's a, such a pleasure to be here with you. Absolutely. So I love your story, Michelle. I love, um, just to give you guys a little information about Michelle, she was a successful salesperson in the pharmaceutical space, um, over 20 years, making very good money for a lot of other people when suddenly got her pink slip along with half of her division. And that is when she went on her mission, her, her found, foundation of her company, which is Lemonade Legend, which I absolutely love the name. I'll have to find, you have to tell us where that came from, but um, really her, her specialty is, is helping people amplify their, bo their voice and turn their lemonade story into, lemon, lemon story into lemonade. So I am so excited to interview you. And Michelle, I would love to start by just hearing about your lemons to lemonade story. Can oh, you share well, that don't, don't we all have uh, a few of them? Yeah. <laughs> I, I never say there's one, you know, you're, you're gonna have lemons raining down on your head most, most of your life, but um, the key is learning how to turn them into lemonade. Um, so the basis of my story, um, and, and this comes out in, in the, my first book, the only book that I've published on my own is The Lemonade Stand, which is an anthology of those types of stories. And that came about because I felt a powerful need to share my story. Um, you know, I've carried it around all my life, and, um, and I just I really wanted to share not only the story, but I wanted to share the outcome and where I am now. Um, based on, on, on that. And so, um, but I was too scared to do it on my own. So I gathered a bunch of women and we did it as an anthology and we all shared our stories together. And my story is that I was born with a profound hearing loss, um, mostly in the uh, higher frequencies, but up to at a certain point, I'm profoundly deaf. And um, just due to a lot of reasons, which I won't take up your time now, uh, as many times as I tried hearing aids, I could never, ever get them to really work um, well enough to want to stick with them. So I just learned to adapt. So I read lips. I uh, pay very close attention to body language. Um, I am focused 100% on you when I'm talking to you, um, which is really a gift because most people aren't very good listeners. And okay. I'm forced to be a good listener. I have to be, I can't afford not to be. So that was one of the secrets in uh, pharmaceuticals, although I had a lot of challenges, such as being in meetings and, oh, of course, in pharmaceuticals, you always go to the bar with everybody, you know? <laughs> and they're loud and you can't hear. But when it came to working with the doctors, with my customers, I was right there at them. And I was paying attention and I was listening to what they needed and what they wanted. Whereas so many of the reps would go in and they're telling jokes and they're, you know, high five in the dock and um, they're, they're more, looking. More <laughs> probably, right? Exactly. You know, but me, my best, you know, defense out there was, uh, or my offense, I should say, was, was using my skills to listen very, very carefully and develop the relationship. So I was very successful. I won a lot of awards. Um, and I didn't fit the mold necessarily as the pharmaceutical reps that were um, out there. Because um, traditionally, they are the, the young and the beautiful and the um, sports oriented, that they could talk to the doctor, you know, the, the guys at least. Anyways, I just, um, but I did well. I did well in spite of, um, of my disability. But along with that story comes with growing up in school where children are mean um, and, you know, can bully and, you know, put perceptions out there because they don't understand, you know, why you don't hear what they're saying. They don't understand, you know, why you don't understand the lyrics of music, you know, that's so popular out there. And, and so I suffered a lot of self-doubt, um, 
you know, I didn't love myself very much. All those things that we all talk about, um, you know what it is, you know, it's yeah. a little yeah. bit on your shoulder saying, you know, you know, you're not worth anything. And, and that was very, very affected by my inability um, to hear well. So that was really my story. And when I was, um, when I was fired from pharmaceuticals, I was, I knew I'd aged out of the system. And that was a big reason why um, uh, for the firing. And I was still on top of my sales game. Uh, so I wasn't going to go back into that space. So what do you do though? You know, you're in your 50s, you're not ready to retire, you can't afford to retire. Um, where are you going to go? Um, so I, I, just, I went into the entrepreneurial space. And um, I, I did spend just a little bit of time in the um, um, financial world. Uh, got my Series 65, very proud that I could even do that. But you know, once I got into it, I went, this is nothing more than pharmaceutical sales with just a little bit of a different twist. You know, same thing. I really don't want to be in it. <laughs> so, you know, what do I do now? So I turned completely away from that. I, at that point, I said, I, I have to be out of the box thinking here. So that's when I went to uh, my uh, sort of love of writing. My, my real love is reading. My, my, uh, my dream was being a writer um, all my life. But of course, I never felt like, you know, I could do that. That's not something I can do. And um, so I thought, but I can do content writing. I'm good enough at writing. I can get into marketing in that phase and do content writing. Did that. It was fine. It didn't have my heart, but um, I was doing I was doing well with it. And then came the time where I just it was just bubbling up in me that I just wanted to tell my story because at that point in time, it suddenly reached the point where I felt very fearless. First time in my life. First time in my life, I was open about my hearing loss. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to hear it. If that isn't the stupidest thing that I even hear myself saying, I tried to hide it all my life. How do you hide something like that? How do you hide the fact that you constantly say, I'm sorry, what did you say? Or, <laughs> but me, I thought I could hide it and, and have that perfect persona. If I could just hide it well enough, I could be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I, I even hit it throughout 20 years of pharmaceuticals. Uh, I'm amazed that it happened. And um, so then when that all came crashing down, I finally um, accept, accepted myself for who I am and, um, and how the hearing loss shaped me into actually being a better person in, in many ways. Um, so I wanted to tell my story. Uh -huh. it's and I felt at my age to feel this fearless and to just go out and do it and just say, I, I, I'm just gonna do what I have to do. I'm gonna learn what I have to learn. I had all my women friends who were around my age saying, you know, why don't you just retire? And I'm like, I, I don't wanna retire. Oh, yeah. I'm not ready to retire. Quit telling you know, I'm, you're a housewife. I don't want, no, I don't wanna retire. So, um, so there's a lot of conflict and in, in all that, but it, it did make me feel like I had suddenly reached a point where I had finally been able to put the disability that weighed me down and burdened me on my life behind me and to be open about it and, and to say, that's what I got going on and you accept it or you don't. Um, you, you live with my built, you know, with my difficulties, or you don't, you know, and uh, that was the story I wanted to put out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's a beautiful story. I, you mentioned that idea of ageism, and I, I, I hear this all the time. I've been recruiting for 25 years, and a lot of candidates would come to me and, and ask me about that. I, I like to call it more experiencism. I tell them. <laughs> But, you know, what would you say to someone, we're living in such a crazy world of change and transition right now, what would you say to someone that's listening right now that is feeling that ageism or experiencism and how can I possibly reinvent myself at, at this stage in my life? 
Well, first of all, I'm a big, big promoter of reinventing yourself. So, and I, I love that. And, and you know, I, I think if you're at that point, you have a choice. Uh, had I really still loved pharmaceuticals, there would have been a place for me because there is always, always those companies that are looking for somebody that has the experience, that they're not necessarily the ones that are going after the youth or the inexperience. A lot, a lot of times they're going after the low salaries because of the inexperience. That's a I big agree. deal. But if you love what you're doing, continue to do it. You will find somebody that's going to appreciate that. If you don't, if you feel like following your heart and starting a new path, just do it. Because what I'm finding, and it, 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 it it's taken me a little while um, since, um, since I was fired from the job to actually fall into a comfortable place and feel successful. But I have to be honest with you, it was a very short period of time that I became successful with tremendous growth the minute I found the thing I loved. Mm. And the thing I loved was when I put the lemonade stand together and I realized that, that that was my path. So I spent several years before that with the content writing and that, and I was struggling with all the entrepreneurial thing. And then I found what I loved and what I consider my zone of genius. And that was only seven months ago. And it's, wow. and it's, going, it's going boom, boom, boom like that. So I, I, I think that that's the key. If you're doing what you love to do and you're good at it, you'll be successful. Absolutely. Now, you and I, you and I actually met through a fellow um, association, Miss Sharon Lecter. Uh -huh. And I know when you first entered this world of business building, you mentioned really immersing yourself in this entrepreneurial space and that, and that power of association. Um, share with our audience about what that has done for you and, and how it's, it's fueled you and propelled you forward. Sure. Um, yeah, the power of association is huge. And that's something I set out to do from the very beginning. A lot of the people who are in Sharon Lecter's world are people that I started connecting with very early um, to be able to reach that, the level that she's at and the connections that she has. Um, I am not a very good networker. A um, lot of that because of my hearing. I'm very intimidated to walk into a room and try to navigate, you know, that situation. However, I have found that by connecting up with certain um, individuals that I know are, they are well connected, then I, tr I personally get connected with them. What can I do for you? Mm -hmm. You know, then of course they're, what can you do for me? And, and you can't go off and spend money to get every co great coach out there that is well connected, but you can find ways to be in the, you know, the group coaching, which is less expensive or um, ask them, you know, for introduction. I mean, the key in that power of association is being able to get that referral or have that time where you really get to know them. It's not the networking in the room trying to say, hey, pay attention to me. I want you to pay attention right. to me. Um, you just start making those connections with people who have connections and then it just starts to grow. So during COVID has been phenomenal for me because everything's being done on Zoom. And that's a space I'm really comfortable with. So I participated in so many of the, of the events. Um, I sponsor some of them, I present in some of them, or just simply I'm just there, but my name is out there. And my name gets seen over and over and over again. And so, it has finally, in, in a fairly short period of time, moved up to the point where there's a lot of people who know who I am in some pretty, pretty powerful places. And yeah. that's really exciting, you know? I still have Mr. Little self doubt sits up here and goes, <laughs> you don't belong here. <laughs> well, I think some of it is 
in my experience, I, I see people that want to do something different with their lives, but they, they're just looking at those people up on that pedestal and they think, how can I possibly even get there? Why should I even try? You know, not remembering that they all started the same place that everyone did, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, I, I will say that I, I believe in mentors and coaching um, and a good coach is never inexpensive, but the, a good one is worth every penny. But the key is finding the right one because there, there's a lot of coaches out there. And I think you need to really interview, spend time, find out where their zone of genius is. Um, is it what you're needing um, specifically in your business? I mean, I started out with a gentleman who's great, but he was much more geared toward how do you how do you build a business in a, a brick and mortar space? You know, mm -hmm. and that, that wasn't me. And um, so I soon realized that that was not the kind of coaching I, I needed, even though he was a brilliant man. Um, so for me, it was a process of kind of testing out different coaches. And by that, that's what I referred to. A lot of times they'll have these little small, smaller group coaching or, hey, let me invite you to be a part of, you know, the, the one evening of, of people just talking. You get to, you know, a, an opportunity to try them on for size. Yeah. And when you, find, when you find the right person who um, has the expertise that you need um, and the personality gels, um, it can be an amazing thing. And, and I know that um, that's how I have grown so quickly in the last few months. Um, and that's Did you have, uh, like the one coach that really fit you? Yes, yes, yes. My coach is Angel Tessie, and she is phenomenal. And she specializes in media and exposure. And so that might not be someone else's specific area. For me, I knew it was because I knew that I was taking the Lemonade Dan book and that I was going to grow from that into writing more books and creating the platform uh, for people to tell their stories. And that requires exposure. It requires media to get you known. So it was really easy for me to zone in on her because I knew that's what I needed. Yeah. Um, you know, I also know an incredible vision coach, Carrie Conley. She's amazing. But I had my vision. If you don't have your vision, that's like the first thing you should work on. But there's so many, there's so many stages of of building a business. And I love exactly. your I love your, I guess your genre, genre, I don't know what you call it, but <laughs> your your niche that you I read something that 80 81% of people want to write a book. They want to write their story, but only 1% actually do. It's kind of almost like the same stats as a marathon runner. Um, I ran a marathon, so I guess I better write a book at some point. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm curious, why do you think it is that so many people want to write their story, but so few actually do? Um. A couple of reasons for that. Um, there is something about the title of author that's very powerful. It, I mean, it just, it, it, I think it's that title that gives people the desire to want to write a book. I think the reason a lot of people want to write their book about their story is that there is such power in stories. Um, I think when somebody has lived through it and survived it and thrived it from it. I think there's just this, this, this need, it's like bubbles up inside of you to want to share that and say, hey, I'm somebody, I'm somebody important. I'm somebody that went through challenges and obstacles and, and I made it, I did it and I wanna be acknowledged for it. I think, and, and that, there's a lot of ego in that which is okay. 
we, nothing wrong with that. But I think that's a big reason why people want to. Um, the biggest reason they don't is because it's an extremely intimidating process. Well, and I think you said it, you wanted to share the outcome. And I think my observation in all the years of recruiting, we very few of us, I mean, we don't have a class, what am I meant to be when I grow up? And I think a lot of people, they, they kind of accidentally get into what they, they're doing and they just stay there. And so they really haven't finished writing their story. It's like they get halfway and then they, they stop writing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they haven't figured out how to end the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell, tell us about, um, you know, I loved for our, our listeners that are interested, just tell us about the process that you take your authors through and just give us a little insight into your world. Sure. Um, and there, again, uh, to understand my business, you have to understand that I'm out to create the largest storytelling distribution network in the world. I love it. <laughs> It's a big, lofty dream, but, but one of my mentors said, you got to put it out there because this is what you're going to do. So, um, so I say it so that I'll believe it and I'll do it. So I have many different platforms in which people can share their stories. The two, two ways that I really emphasize is the Lemonade Stand, which is my anthology, which we're, uh, I'm in the middle of putting together book number two. And um, so there's an opportunity there because I still have open spots for authors. Um, but let's focus on that for one minute before we move to the others. And that is putting a chapter in a book, an anthology, is so much less intimidating than thinking about writing your own book. If you're writing your own book, you're thinking about, you know, editing and uh, book design. Um, how do I market this and promote it? Um, how do I reach the bestseller uh, status? How do, how do I even start the writing process? Um, what do I, you know, title do I give it? There's just so many elements that go into writing your own book. When you go into an anthology, you know, really the work, it, it, a lot of that hard stuff is done. The book design's been made. The theme of the book is kind of there. Um, you know, you've got the support of cross promotion and a, a team behind you that's marketing, um, editors that are already on board. And so, and, and at a much, much, much lower cost, you can invest into that opportunity to be in a chapter uh, in a book. Here's the beauty of it. If that book reaches best seller status, which mine do, you are a best-selling author. It doesn't matter whether you wrote the whole book yourself. Just by contributing and having your name on the book, you automatically can say, I am a best-selling author. And that's with you forever. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a cool thing to put, you know, under your email signature, or, you know, how you're being introduced, whatever. So that's a beautiful way to get started because um, the, as, as you say, how do I walk them through the process? As a team, we all work together. We start putting together an outline. We, we talk about our lemons. We put together our outline. Um, they start to get fleshed out. The editor comes on board. Um, she works individually um, and she's a, a writing coach. So your, your level of writing talent doesn't matter. Um, she will get a beautiful story out of, out of you. And then we work with the team and that's really one of the, the most beautiful things that came out of the first book is we became so bonded um, as the lemonade crew, as I call ourselves. Um, and we're still friends. And we will forever be friends because we're bonded in that, that in that sharing of our personal stories and our past, um, and just the whole process we tried to do as 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 a team. So in the first book, we we all chose the design of the book, 
you know, um, uh, together as a team. Um, came, we made a lot of decisions as a team. We cross-promoted. We did book signing together. Um, it's networking on steroids in a sense because there's nothing I wouldn't do for these women. And if I'm going to promote somebody or refer, I mean, they're the first group I'm going to go to because I trust them that much. Um, so that's really kind of it for the process. We just, it, they get walked through it. They get ta taught how to put together a launch team to help them promote and reset that best selling status. Um, and then we just continue to um, teach ways of uh, creative ways of promoting um, even months after the book has released so that, um, you know, it, it's still out there. And, um, and, and then they can use the book for so many things. It opens doors for podcasts and radio spots. And um, you can use it as a, 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 an opt-in to get, you know, like the lead magnet. So I know not everybody knows all the buzzwords, but you can use it to build your database and things like that and get exposure um, for your business. So it's just a lot of benefits that come out of it. And um, I've had a couple of authors after they went through the one chapter and they saw the process and said, I can write a whole story now. Yeah, absolutely. There's, I mean, there's lots of chapters in all of our lives. Tell me, I, I've, I've made an observation and I'm curious for you. I, we're, for those listening later, we are in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. And we know that there is innovation going on before our eyes right now. Um, under in lots of lots of closed rooms and lots of you know zoom chats and different things like that what I would love to hear about what's what's exciting for you right now besides this besides this new book what collaboration are you creating I know we have something special together that we're working on um, would love to hear about what's the next year looking like for you Oh my goodness, a lot of, um, as I say, COVID-19 has put me into, um, you know, Mach 10 speed of putting things together because opportunities have come up and you just, you, I hate to say no. Um, <laughs> I have to be careful not to chase the shiny object and to make sure I'm focused on the right thing, but a lot of those right things have come along. So um, one of the things is um, uh, I've collaborated with somebody who's very, very um, uh, inter interconnected in, in my circle of, of people, and including Sharon Lecter, and that's Zondra Evans, who has Zondra TV Network. So she puts out, she's got eight different channels that she has distribution rights for. So she is bringing in uh, independent producers to be um, a part of her network. And I'm going to have two shows. So, um, yeah, so I'm very excited about that. So one show will be uh, Lemonade Life, which will really be all about the, um, the individuals who have participated in uh, the Lemonade Dan book or the Lemonade Legend magazine. Um, it, it'll be an opportunity for them to get more exposure, for them to uh, sort of uh, uh, um, blend in exposure about their business too, along with their story. And then the other one is Legendary Leaders, which is um, the author uh, a book that I'm publishing. So it'll be very, very focused. And that's going to be a lot of fun because for those people who kind of have it back there, I want to write a book, you know, but I'm too afraid. Um, so we'll talk a lot about the process. Now, how'd you get started? What were you feared? How'd you overcome it? And what were the stumbling blocks that, you know, and how did you get past, you know, those blocks and things like that. So we won't just be talking about the book. We'll be talking about that whole author process. So those are both coming out in the fall. And, um, oh, there's just, um, I'm talking about virtual reality stages with, with some people where, um, that's becoming a big thing to be able to do actual presentation from stage, but you're in avatar form. <laughs> that, one, that blows my mind. So I just, I can't, like, 
a hundred percent embrace it, but I have people trying to you know, pull me into that one. Um, but then the collaborative project I've got coming up is, as we mentioned, the great Sharon Lecter and Assets of Sexy, which is coming up again November 6th as the second event. We're doing an entire Lemonade Lecter magazine um, edition all around that. Because I have to tell you, I've been on a lot of virtual events, a lot of them. And the first Assets of Sexy, Best one I've been on. It was first. The people, the messaging, how they ran it, um, the breaks, the length of time, all the work that she put behind it. I sat put together um, just a really an amazing event, and I made so many connections from that, and um, um, it, it was from her most recent. Um, uh, be strong, I think it was. Anyway, it was her little. It was her little teaser before um, the next uh, assets are sexy, and that, that's where you and I met. And again, um, even though there were some hiccups, um, is an amazing uh, uh, group of people and uh, such great connections. So I have a great respect for her, and 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 her power of association is just something. I want to really be a part of. So we reached that collaboration that, you know, it's win-win. Um, I'll win by being able to say I had this addition with not only Sharon, but all these amazing people who are part of the Assets of Sexy team. Uh, and um, and her, her team is it, it, going to get great exposure. It's it just, I'm so excited because I already have her photo put on the cover of the magazine and it is the most stunning cover I have ever seen. <laughs> and, oh, she, is, she is a one classy lady, I tell you. <laughs> so really I can't is. believe it. We are out of time, Michelle. It's you and I, I think, could talk forever. We've already talked a lot before we even started recording. I know, I know. Um, I, I wanted to just make sure everyone knows how to reach you. And I know I actually already downloaded, you have some great free content on your site as well. Is there anything you'd like to point them attention to um, specifically? Um, is that, yeah, I'm very easy to get in touch. Uh, with, um, find me, you can find me all over the place. As long as you remember Lemonade Legend, because yeah, yeah. email is Michelle at Lemonade Legend. Uh, website is LemonadeLegend.com um, and you can contact me through the website. You can get um, my 100 creative brainstorming ideas to publish your book uh, by going to the website. Um, so I just encourage anyone who has questions, just schedule a call. My calendar is on there to schedule a call. I'm more than happy to have that discovery call of, you know, do you fit anywhere in the magazine and the book and you writing your own book? Um, do you want to be on a podcast? Um, there's just lots of opportunity to get exposure and be heard and to tell your story. And I really, really want women to tell their stories. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's been such Thank a Thank you, Lisa. To my amazing Dream Big Nation community, I am so, so very grateful to be part of your day. As you know, the stories that we're bringing to you have, are helping me in my own journey as every aspiring and new entrepreneur. And I am just so grateful that we have these opportunities to bring you these stories. I hope they've inspired you. Um, as always, you can check out more information at Lisa Williams Co. And Bless you all in this amazing life journey, and I can't wait to see you soon. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you.